Hi, Nourish Temple community. I am going to go through some dry store ingredients that I highly recommend you guys have at home. Uh, and I'll split it into three. So the first will be dry stores that I keep in the fridge. And the second will be um, any sort of nuts and grains and things like that, which I keep in the pantry. And the third will be spices. So all of these are from pretty much the same place, which is a sauce, um, which is a bulk foods place. So there's so many different types, just find one that is near you. I do recommend buying that way because it's actually really exciting because you really get to um, see the products up close and you are also really contributing to saving the planet by reducing your packaging. So you can actually take your own jars there and fill them up or you can fill paper bags and then bring them home. And it's also usually helping the local community because they're um, individually owned often. So we'll start off with um, these which are black sesame seeds. So these are really nice to work with when you want to jazz up your meal a little bit. I use them for Asian foods just to sprinkle on top of the garnish which is really nice. Um, that being said, I suggest putting everything in glass jars as well. So you can buy glass jars or just reuse some of some products that you've had before. These are pepitas. So pepitas are pumpkin seeds. These are well, a staple here actually in my place. So I use them a lot. You can put them in things like mueslis and granolas. I toast them and put them on top of butter bowls or um, like warm salads and things like that. So these are pretty good. These ones are activated already and I do suggest these ones because they're really yummy, they're much better. That being said as well, I would recommend getting as much as possible organic or at least um, pesticide free. It's you're worth it, your body's worth it, it's much better for the planet in the long run and also you do taste the difference so you'll see the quality is much better and often the price isn't even that much more so I do recommend it if you can. Dates, so I always get the ones with the pit in it, you'll see the difference, the other ones are really sugary and quite dried already so these ones are much nicer than the dual dates. I use these, these are a great sugar substitute and you can actually soften them in warm water and then blitz them and sort of make almost like caramels out of them. So they're, they're pretty easy to use and really versatile. Please be careful. I see a lot of people in their recipes go to town with dates. They just put way, way too many in there um, thinking they're a natural, a natural sweetener and they are, but they're still a sugar bomb. So just, you don't need to overdo it with dates. Cacao really staple important ingredient and I highly recommend getting a good quality one. This one's a raw cacao and quite often you'll find um, the better quality ones as well that haven't been like heat processed so there's a lot more nutrients in here and you will again taste the difference. So cacao is amazing, it's super high in things like magnesium, calcium, zinc, lots of antioxidants so it's a really beautiful um, product to have and it's super yummy. Tahini, this one I get which is made by the store that I get all of these dry goods at, the sauce. Um, but you might have a really high tech blender that can make pastes quite easily. So, or you might get it from the supermarket either way. There's two types, there's hulled and unhulled. So tahini is sesame seeds. So sesame seeds are nutrient dense as well. They're actually a really amazing little seed. Super high in calcium, so they're really great. Um, Unhulled means that they've still got their outer shell on, which is what has even more nutrients in it. So this is much higher in um, you know, goodness than the hulled one. Tahini is a little bit bitter, so you'll, you'll learn to like it. It's a really amazing product. Um, you can make great dressings and spreads and all sorts of things with this. And you can even use it in baking as well. So I highly recommend getting some tahini. Um, coconut chips. So you will most likely see that there's many many forms of coconut you can get um, desiccated which is really really fine um, you can get um, even like a coconut flour which i actually never use anymore because it's just it's so heavy and and oily in a way that i just don't prefer to use it i usually personally always get the coconut chips so these are quite large um, so still in their whole form as much as possible and that way you can just blitz it yourself and make a little powder out of it. Or it's usually when I bake with it, it will still be a little bit gritty. Um, 
a little bit coarse, but it just means by having it in its whole form like this or any other nuts, it means that they're retaining all of their amazing oils and nutrients so much more. So I highly recommend getting the whole form. That being said, I keep them all in the fridge because these are all seeds and nuts and they have a high oil content. So by keeping them in the fridge, this means that we're protecting that and they'll be much better for us and they'll hold a lot longer without going rancid as well. So in the fridge is good. And it's actually really exciting when you open the fridge to get inspired about what you can cook with and what you can make. These are hemp seeds, so um, they're really, they've become a real favourite of mine. They're so easy to use and sprinkle on things like porridge and stuff in the morning. You can also blitz them up and put them into cakes or into the baking. They are really great um, because they're, they're quite balanced in their omegas, omega-3s and 9s and 6s. Um, which the body really needs they're highly important so flax seeds these guys here are still good but um, I definitely prefer using things like hemp seeds now instead but um, I'll talk about flax in a minute so that's hemp seeds there talking about hemp um, I usually have a hemp protein as well a hemp protein powder which I use um, and I put in like my porridges and I also sometimes bake with them. So I highly suggest the hemp protein. Oh, here it is, hemp protein. So it's a really nice green color and you'll notice it'll stay so much fresher in the fridge as well. So you don't want this to oxidize or get like damaged by the sun in any way. So you wanna keep things like this in the fridge. So back to flax seeds, they're also called linseeds. Um, these are like magical because they can create almost like an egg-like consistency. So for those people on plant-based diets like me, where we don't use those products um, from animals, these are a great substitute. So you can actually just blitz it and add a little bit of water and it will make like an egg sort of binding consistency. Or you can just blitz it and put it into all kinds of baking as is as well. So it's a really strong binding agent. Um, with all of these sorts of seeds, especially linseed, you want to break the seed. So you'll notice, even just putting it in between your fingers, your gut needs to work so hard to try and break these hard shells of the seeds down. Um, that's why we always need to crush them if we're going to eat them, um, because otherwise we're not really getting any nutrients out of them and they're going straight through. So it's really important to consider that and, and pay attention to that. Um, I also make really nice seed crackers out of these, so they're pretty good, um, pretty good to use. So that being said about seeds, chia is also a great seed to use as a binding agent. So you can just add um, like a few to a bowl and add some water and then they'll swell up and you can use that as an egg sort of consistency as well but I often just blitz them into a really fine powder and add them into baking and that way they can do their job anyway. You can also just sprinkle them on top of things like porridge. Um, not that I have many smoothies from a Chinese med point of view, of course, but um, you could also put them into smoothies and things like that. But I usually actually use them for baking. We will go, these are pretty staple in my house. Um, dry roasted almonds so obviously you can get just normal almonds as well i can never go back after i've had dry roasted um, they're just so so much better so much tastier if you want you can get the raw ones and actually bake them in the oven yourself and dry roast them that way these are a really big staple because i blitz them up and i use them in um, bliss balls in baking i crush them and put them on top of porridge I even sprinkle them on top of butter bowls or, sal or warm salads and things like that, or I just snack on them. So the roast almonds are really amazing. And almonds are quite a dry nut in the sense they have a drying effect on the body. So as opposed to a lot of other nuts and seeds which are really high in oils, um, these sort of have a little bit of a different effect. So I've got a blog on nuts which you can read about. Um, sunflower seeds. Uh, pretty amazing as well lots of amazing nutrients in them these are super yummy just roasted in the pan in a dry pan and you can sprinkle them on top of um, things like roast veggies and warm salads and stuff like that I accidentally made oh no that's with these guys <laughs> with um one thing I'll just talk about while I'm here 
So LSA mix is linseeds, sunflower and almonds. So please don't ever buy finished almond meal or finished LSA from the shops because that has been so overprocessed, obviously blitzed and ground down months and months and months before you will ever eat it. So there's really hardly any of those amazing oils left and it just means you're not you'll also taste the difference you're not really getting as much out of it as what you think so quite often LSA is um, marketed as like sort of a bit of a superfood or something to sprinkle on top to get extra nutrients and goodness and having a pre-made mix is just not going to be as good for you so you can quite easily just add these three together to a blender and blitz your some for yourself keep it in a little jar and pop it in the fridge and that way it's super fresh so another thing I make, for instance, is I got a bit lazy when I was meant to be baking one day and I didn't blitz these separately for the cake I was making and I just blitzed them all together and I created an amazing sort of um, sprinkle, I'm calling it, which I put on tops of, of granolas and things like that or porridges. And so they're just super yummy. You can have them ready to go blitzed up in the fridge so it will still be a little bit coarse. but it's super easy to just put on things in the morning if you need to get somewhere or need to get the kids fed or and want to make sure everyone's still eating really well so this is what i mean by having all these things on hand you can really do so much with so little ingredients um it's it's really beautiful what you can make and how creative you can get with it walnuts are one of my favorites because they have such a beautiful effect on our body so these really stimulate the kidneys and boost the kidney energy a lot um, they're really powerful in that sense they're also super delicious for like savory things so their friends are things like beetroot and um, like a homemade feta um, from like nuts as well which i'll talk about another day but um or you can just roast them i usually put them on tops of on top of porridges and stuff like that and i even make um, things like banana bread and stuff with them. So walnuts are pretty important as well. Brazil nuts. So I just have two of these as a snack. Um, two Brazil nuts give you the right amount of selenium a day, which selenium can be something that we can be deficient in quite often. And so just two of these will do the trick. So I don't really use them for much else. You can make cheeses and things out of them, but I don't really play with that as much. Um, but that's Brazil nuts. That being said too, you can make really amazing fetters and things like that from almonds. So um, there's so much you can make from nuts. Macadamias are a pretty important nut as well in my household. So um, I use them mainly only two different ways. One is to roast with some veggies, um, a beautiful salad I make and dry roasted. These are really delicious. So um, macadamias are pretty amazing. They're also Australian. so. They're a beautiful nut to use. I also make a really um, yummy cream out of these. So um, things that you can have on Mexican food or I also make a lot of dressings out of these. Mainly, you'll see that I don't really use cashews. Cashews are a very, very heavy, creamy, dense nut. Um, so macadamias are a really nice, cleaner substitute for that. So I highly recommend using ca uh, macadamias instead of cashews where you can. Um, they're much much cleaner for the body to try and process as well and from a Chinese medicine perspective cashews are very dense and can really um, be quite heavy on the digestive system actually so that's why I prefer using these we have some hazelnuts so I don't use these very much but sometimes in baking so I make some really yummy chock fudge cookies which these are in and also some bliss balls and things like that so you can put hazelnuts in those they're also great for savory things like salads or on top of like certain things um, like roast pumpkin or something like that you can play around with those carob is pretty much the second last one here carob i don't use that much i go through phases with it but it's really beautiful really has amazing minerals as well and you can just sort of make a lot of yummy treats with it i usually put it in bliss balls um, but it, i usually partner it with the cacao as well so and hemp protein actually so they're really easy to, to make some quick and easy treats with so the kids or yourself have got something ready to go 
And this is a chai which I get from the dry store as well. I usually keep it in the fridge because I do love a good chai. This one is a caffeine free one. Chai is really warming, it has really beautiful spices which are great for the digestive system and immunity. So that's the last one in my fridge. So that's all the nuts and seeds that I stock at home. And with this, it's actually not that many. And so with this, you can make so, so many things. So I highly recommend these are my top ones to have.